Hi, I'm Travis Shaddix. I'm the market manager for Harrell's, and we're with you today on this video to talk about raw materials, how they relate with minor elements, and the ability of these raw materials to produce stains and the implications of those stains. So we're gonna show you which raw materials stain. We're gonna talk about potential agronomic implications of that. We're looking at a slide here of a concrete paver that has a variety of different stains on it. We're gonna, we're gonna walk through these one at a time and talk about these raw materials and which one's stained. So let's start at the top left-hand corner. All the top two rows are all iron products. The top left-hand corner is iron sulfate. And we see from a sulfate form a, a very magnified stain. From my experience, the sulfate form of minor elements produces the most staining and it does it in a very rapid fashion compared to the other uh, raw materials. So number two is polymer coated iron sulfate, polyon. This is a polyon product and we see simply by polymer coating that iron sulfate we produce almost no staining. So there's the value of polymer coated uh, with iron sulfate. Number three is an organic form of iron uh, in the form of uh, vig iron. It produces very little staining. Um, you can see a little bit of number three. Number four and five are iron chelate and iron polymer coated iron chelate, not polyon, but uh, another polymer coated iron chelate. And we see staining from both of those products. And what that means really is that even though it's an iron chelate, it still has the ability to be oxidized and produce a stain, which is a little bit surprising, but keep that in mind as we apply iron chelates. Yes, they are more available to the plant, but as you can see here in number four, number five, they are so also are available to be oxidized. Six, seven, eight, and nine are iron sucrate, iron oxide, a, an activated sewage sludge, and then frit, which is a combination product. No staining occurred from any of these. The reason for this is the sucrate and the oxide are essentially the same product. However, the sucrate has been ground up and then re-aggregated by using a, a sugar. So it's still an oxide. They've already been oxidized, okay? They, they are, have already gone through that transformation. There's no staining to occur. There's also no agronomic value to any, any extent with those products. Very little of that material is ever gonna be available to the plant. Number eight, a sewage sludge has a very low amount of the iron in there, but you can see there's no staining. That, that is a, it's a decent material to use. Um, just keep in mind that it's a very small amount of the element in that product. So keep that in mind whenever you're talking about the amount of material you need to apply to get a response. And then frit is just a, a combination of different elements that are all oxide and oxidized, and we see no staining from that. 10 is a five in one, so that's five irons in one. That's basically sulfate and chelate and sucrate and, and, or the organic. Uh, material as well as uh, you know, all five of the materials, all in one, and we see a little bit of staining from five and one, but um, uh, but not near as bad as the sulfate. Let's move right down to the manganese, and we see manganese oxysulfate and manganese sulfate produce a very similar response as the ones above. The sulfate forms, even if it's oxysulfate, where it's a blend of ox oxide and sulfate, it still produces a stain, as you see in number 11. And uh, number 12 obviously looks very similar to the iron sulfate stain. So. Um, sulfate is a big no-no if you're trying to avoid staining. Number 13 is a sucrate, very little staining, if, if any, but also very little availability agronomically. 14, uh, uh, manganese chelate, again, there's a little bit of staining from the chelate form, so even though it is more available to the plant, it still will provide and produce a stain. And number 15, NutriPlus, is a, is a blend of, of products with manganese in it, and we see no staining from that. The lower row, magnesium, all of our raw materials that have magnesium, none of them stained. So um, you're safe to go with any magnesium granular wise in a granular blend, uh, you're not gonna produce any staining from magnesium sources. So these are the raw materials we use. You can see, go back and refer to this if, you're, if you wanna uh, go back and, and determine which exactly one you're using and whether or not it'll stain or not. You can refer to this through our Herald's blog. It's, it, it'll be up there when you need to, need to use it. Okay, so we just showed you the different raw materials and we showed you which ones stain and which ones don't stain. Let's talk a little bit about the implications of that beyond just staining, which obviously is a huge issue, okay? But if that's not really your issue, if staining is not a problem for you, there's still more information you need to know. The implications are when that stain occurs, it is the, the product of a compound oxidizing from sulfate to oxide. It's unavailable at that point to the plant. So you're applying a product, some portion of which, I, the portion may be 1%, it might be 80%, I don't know the exact portion, but some portion of that is gonna be unavailable to the plant. We're not applying products because we, we have extra money in our pocket. We need to apply products that have agronomic value, and when these products oxidize, think of that as that product is no longer available to the plant, regardless of whether it's on a concrete surface or on the soil, it's still oxidizing. 
And some portion is going to be unavailable. It's important to understand that when you're building your agronomic programs.